Man, it's it's like nighttime in here where I am. Is it just dark over there or what? It's thinking about raining. Yeah, it's dark here too. We've had no sun because uh, the god darn mayor scorched the sky, as it were. <laughs> yeah. It's a Matrix reference. I never get to see the outside because uh, UV light is not allowed in here. So. Oh, that's that makes good. Sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, it. Uh, I, I've mentioned this to you before, specifically, uh, Frank, but we have no UV coating on the glass in our apartment. Mm. Mimsy likes to, she likes the sun. She likes to do stretches in the sun. Oh, she's a cat. <laughs> yeah. I kept telling her. You're going to want to start wearing some sunscreen when you do it. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't believe you. So I held up my transition lenses to the window and they they transitioned. They turned into sunglasses. And she was like, what does that mean? And I was like, well, anybody who ever decided to pay for transition lenses for glasses knows they only transition in the presence of UV light. And if you're wearing them behind a window that is UV treated, they famously do not turn into sunglasses. You have to be outside. If you really wanted to get through to her, what you should have done was boot up a copy of Boktai. And when she saw how strong your character was. Sure, sure. Yeah, that uh, could definitely play Boktai in this house. <laughs> Nowhere else. I, I live in the one room where you could play that video game. Interestingly, we're going to be talking about that on the show today. Boktai. Wouldn't we say Boktai? We say, well, we do. I mean, uh, we could say it that way. But I say karaoke. I say karate. I say Boktai. I don't say Boktai. I, I always said Boktai. I never heard of anyone saying it another way. So I guess... Uh, I, I would say Boktai. Huh. Uh, and I'd say Pokemon as well. Okay. Because it's supposed to be Pocket Monster. Pocket Monsters, yeah. And Boktai is supposed to be... Uh, uh, supposed to be Bocket. <laughs> Bocket Tonsters. Yeah. Bocket, Bocket Tinesters. Yes. Bocket Tinesters, I believe, is the name of that game. Bocket Tinesters. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can we well, write that down enough. somewhere? Yeah. Somebody write down Bocket Tinesters. <laughs> Take a note. Uh, hello and welcome back to Video Games. Tim Rogers here with issue number 324 of Insert Credit, a audio magazine uh, weekly covering a range of topics related to video games, uh, sometimes tangentially related to video games. We're going to try to keep it tangential today. Uh, that's not true. I think we try to keep it tangential quite frequently. We do have a buzzer that plays after about six minutes. Usually the panelists don't actually hear it. It's inserted in post. But today, uh, in the first act of homework, uh, Alex Jeffy, you got to get it back on there. I gave you all the hardware and the software. It's just like this, right? So you got it like, it's a, that's the point of it existing, is that yeah. you can do it at any time. <laughs> Especially <laughs> while Brandon is talking about some so uh, VHS uh, oh, movie. Man. I recommend this VHS movie <laughs> that hopefully a thrift store within 300 miles will have. <laughs> That's what it's for. That's what the buzzer's for. Okay? Check all your thrift stores. It's for when I'm talking slightly a little bit long. So it's, it's uh, just, yeah, just yeah, for yeah, when yeah, I'm it's... going a little long? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. so today, you know, I've got... I've got my finger on the button today. When yeah. you have your finger on the button, <laughs> if you don't know how to get a button and you don't know how to put your finger on it and you don't know how to make the button do a thing, uh, find out. Uh, just <laughs> figure it out. Um, so anyway, uh, I, as I think I've introduced uh, adequately, uh, I'm Tim Rogers. And uh, the fingernail I most often neglect to cut when cutting my fingernails is uh, the god darn index fingernail on my right hand. Which either means that I'm more right-handed than left-handed or more left-handed than right-handed. I don't know what it means. If I don't cut it first, I've discovered over the last 25 years, I usually don't cut it for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. When I sit down, start doing something, go, ah, this one? Isn't this the most historically important finger in human culture? Isn't this the one? And then I, I go back and I have to cut it again. So that's, that's it. I guess I'm next then. I'm always second. Never first. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm Frank Cifaldi. Uh, the the fingernail that I neglect the most um, is actually left thumb, which oh. uh, I, don't, I don't understand because uh, it's your analog stick and thumb. Yeah, it is. But I mean, I always start with left hand, right? Uh -huh. So I, I I holding the clippers in your right hand. I I, I start on easy mode, right? I, I I I warm up with clipping with with my dominant hand. So uh, clipper and right clip in my left hand. For some reason, I just skip the left thumb sometimes. So. Yeah, that's mine. 
Tells me you don't play a lot of uh, AAA uh, open world console video games. Well, they don't be... tend to. Uh, <laughs> the, the nail doesn't tend to get in the way of it putting my no, thumb no. into a thumbstick. Yeah, it does. It does kind of fit in the in the divot pretty yeah, well. It's fine. Yeah, that's true. Fine. No problems. Yeah, I'm Alex Jaffe, and I don't particularly neglect any specific nail on my hand. But I'll tell you this for free. Uh, when I need to get under a fingernail because something got in there, what I use is the uh, sharp end of one of those uh, toothpick uh, flosser things that you get oh, 50 yeah. a pack from CVS. That's a nice way to get in there. Oh, man, those those go straight into landfill, man. Don't, don't use those. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. I, I use a I, I use one of those water flossers. It's an air flosser by Philip Sonicare that uh, I blast my teeth with it. Yeah, uh, it's good. Fourteen, sixteen times a day. Water Just pick. Go there, blast them. Well, I mean, before the show, we were talking about Invisalign. I cannot put these in without without water blasting. Blasting, yeah, my guys. It's just I'm, I refuse to imprison uh, my food bits. Yeah, 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 and then every once in a while, uh, I don't know. How, you, you've been on it. How long you been on it now? Couple of couple of weeks, months, I'm on, weeks, months, years. I'm on my eighth two week tray. So, oh man, yeah, you're fifteen weeks. You're god darn doing it, yeah, yeah. So every once in a while, have you left a piece in there and then been like, god darn it? You, when you take it out, like hours later, you're like, what? There's yeah. something in here. You yeah. get so mad. You call your dentist, and your dentist <laughs> is like, please stop calling me or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, they get like that. Uh, but anyway, I think we got somebody else here on the show. Do we have somebody else. Yeah, it's me. It's Brandon Sheffield. Hello, uh, oh, that god darn guy. You. The the weird thing is, I, oh, <laughs> Dude, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I, I honestly did not mean to do that. I'm uh-huh. sorry. I'm not uh-huh. going to do it again uh-huh. as soon All as right. you start talking again. Don't worry. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's hovering. <laughs> I'm poising. I'm hovering my finger above the button so that I don't accidentally <laughs> do it again. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say left thumb also. Left thumb. You could say that. Which is weird um, that if we would both have the same one. But uh, I always start with the left thumb. So how do mm. I do that? The left thumb is the first one that I clip. How do I skip it? Yeah, uh, but yeah I know. There, I know. That's like I, I always start with the right index yeah. finger. And, and the weirder thing to me is that once last year, I skipped the, what was it? It was the right ring finger. Just like- Whoa. I just, oh yeah, just like completely. Uh, I just like skipped over one in a in a way that makes even less sense to me because like I, the thumb is is I'm starting so okay sometimes like when I'm typing something I'll accidentally start typing the second word first or uh, when I'm writing numbers especially like I'll be writing something down and I'll start with the second number accidentally so it almost makes sense for my brain to skip the first thing but the ring finger on the right hand I'm like almost done. At that point, oh, yeah. what, what, what's going on there? It's not one of the ends, you know. It's it's, it's yeah. between clips. I'm yeah. not, well, I don't know. I, I shouldn't assume that you clip things in I, linear I do, fashion. I do, I do thumb thumb to pinky. Yeah, on both hands, thumb to pinky. Thumb to pinky, both hands. Yeah, I, I do index to pinky and then thumb. So oh, okay. that's probably oh. my problem. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also do index to pinky then thumb. That's true. Yeah, thumb is uh, thumb's number one for me. Thumb is the finger most connected to clipping of nails. Uh, it's the one Certainly. you're actually using to push the nail clipper. So that's right. You don't immediately think of it as a nail. You think of it more as part of the clipper at that mm, point. It's right? the tool. So uh, the the reason I was uh, I I brought this question up is because uh, immediately prior to the show I used to the bathroom and I cut I, I cut my fingernails every morning I don't know how often any of you cut your fingernails it's a habit I have from playing guitar for many years I just I cut my fingernails uh, literally every day I neglected to cut my index finger this morning and was sitting with it for about six hours and kept going you know, typing just being like I got to cut this fingernail when I went to the bathroom again before the show I finally I finally trimmed it all cleaned up. I've been ambidextrous my whole life. I recently mentioned this on a Twitch stream, and someone got very mad at me because they said I've mentioned it too many times that I'm bragging <laughs> about it. And it's like, it's something I've been struggling with. And I, I used your answers today to determine once and for all, I guess I'm more left-handed. So that's the, all right. because because if Frank, you're right-handed, right? Yep. Brandon, you're right-handed, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'm like, I'm one of those people that's 90% rough, uh, right-handed, but there's like, 12 tasks that I have to do with my left hand. Yeah, sure, sure. So it's like, I couldn't tell if, you know, playing guitar, obviously you use the left hand for, you know, I mean, you get, you'll get, you know, Bob Dylan will get mad at you 
if you say the left hand's more important when you're playing guitar right-handed. Um, you know, the people who do a lot of finger picking, that's a, a reference to that. Because, uh, you know, the right the guitar is also the right hand. Some guitarists will uh, uh, mm -hmm. tell you uh, sanctimoniously over My and over mom's again. a finger picker primarily. She does oh, heck all yeah. the finger picking. She's got big old fingernails on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like I, I always cut my fingernails to keep... Uh, you know, able to to fret the strings, and that's just been a habit forever. And I like the way it feels when I type on a keyboard. But I always go for the left hand first, and I always wondered if that was a guitar thing or if that was something else. Or I just think it's it's a left handed thing that I, I or no, I always go for the right hand first when I'm cutting my fingernails, right. even though the left hand is the one I'm more focused on for guitar related stuff. So the fact that I always take the nail clippers in my left hand. Yeah. And I was one. I was just always wondering for years. Like, what does it mean that I start with the right hand? Not wondering. You know, I don't didn't put a whole lot of time into this. But that was just a thing I always kind of thought. You weren't about. staring at the stars at night. I wasn't constantly, yeah. constantly wondering. But it's just every time it came up, I was like, Why do I cut my right hand first with the, the nail clippers? What does that mean? Uh, you know, does it mean I'm right-handed or does it mean that I am more comfortable with the nail clippers in my left hand? Uh, that's that's the kind of tangentially related to video games question we can expect on today's show. After question, 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 question number one. <laughs> okay, question number one. It's episode uh, issue number 324. I, decided, I don't know why I decided to call it that. Issue number 324, which is one of my favorite numbers. It's like maybe my third favorite number. I'll leave it to you to guess why. Um, I picked this number significantly. I kind of hoped that I would have some sort of grand plan for this episode by the time the number came up. However, uh, I, I'm unable to execute on the grand plan, so I will need to host another episode at some point <laughs> in the future. But I did prepare something. And uh, the thing I did prepare... Uh, it's just a couple of questions about video games. So let's 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 check it out. Uh, so next week we will be doing our game of the year 2023 episode. That's true. That is true, right? That is true. That is true, right? Everybody knows that. We're all on the same page as that. And uh, as in uh, recent years, during the game of the year 2023 episode, it is highly expected by audience members and panelists alike that uh, one Frank Cifaldi will uh, produce a list of the seven most recently purchased games in his Steam library mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of trot them out just semi-joylessly, say, I, I kind of played this one, and it'll be very funny to mix them in, usually toward the bottom of the list. And I do enjoy this bit, uh, and I understand sometimes a true aspect. Not a aspe bit. Hey, sometimes, no, not I was about to say, <laughs> sometimes I understand a true aspect of a person's personality uh, manifests in the minds of others as a bit. I'm sorry. It just does. It's okay. That's 90% of what I, I, I got going on when I try to speak publicly uh, is uh, you know const construed as a bit. But anyway, here's what we're going to do on today's episode uh, at, at, as, a, you know, as a question. Question one. The question number one is uh, all of us, with Frank's permission, I should like the dramatic pause there. <laughs> with Frank's permission, <laughs> let's choose a video game coming out in the year 2024. And yes, we're doing Game of the Year 2024 predictions the week yeah. before Game of the Year 2023. Let's pick a game coming out in the year 2024 that we think Frank's not going to play. And let's ask him to play it. Oh, I got one. And let's even offer in a, in a manner, in, in a way just kind of meant to embarrass <laughs> Frank, let's offer to use patreon funds to purchase this game for him when it comes out this is a, a kind of an attempt to make him feel bad and buy it himself which mm -hmm. might may, might not work it's actually kind of you know i'm not i'm not flipping the coin on that I, one i don't I, I don't play a small amount of games for monetary reasons the, the, the purchase price is not an issue oh i know i know that's uh that's why i bring that into this so. yeah Let's so let's let's look at the games coming out in 2024. And Frank, here's here's what we'd I like. I got news: my count appears to be three this year. Oh dang! Oh, three, boy. <laughs> three for 2023. Yes, there's got to be more. Well, in previous years, we've done stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog the movie as one of our entries. So okay. uh, yeah, yeah, we can think yeah, outside the box. We'll figure that out. We're not we're not getting into your 2023 list. Yeah. We're starting your 2024 list now. If you go to Google and Google video games coming out in 2024, you'll get a pretty good list. So these are some games coming out in 2024. All, all I'm asking is we just play one of them that you think you're not going to play. And we're going to try to pitch you on one. Okay. And uh, all, all we request, and you know, depending on when the game you choose comes out, you'll have plenty of time to play it. Uh, some of these might not come out until fall, in which case you'll have three or four months to play what are we going to say? Eight hours? You don't have to play the whole game. You don't have to play the whole game. Eight hours? 
you know, just divvied up however you like. Is that is that fine? What's the game mm-hmm. you're going to mention, Jaffe? What do you got? Frank Cifaldi, I have good news for you. The game that I have in mind is not an upcoming game. It's a game that is out right now. Okay. And it comes with the offer to play it anytime you like with Alex Jaffe. And that game is called Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Oh, boy. <laughs> you're going to have your pick a character. You could be Ooh. Harley Quinn. You could be King Shark. You could be Deadshot. You could be Captain Boomerang. I believe there's going to be some DLC where you can play as the Joker. Uh, but uh, whatever you pick, you got first choice, and I'll be there by your side the entire campaign to kill every member of the world's greatest superhero team. You want to fight Batman? We'll fight Batman together. You and yeah, me, Yeah, you buddy. can kill Batman. Yeah. Kill Kevin Conroy's Batman. That's grim as heck. All right, is this my time to reply to this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. go for it. You know, it's, it's it's whatever you want, Charles. So I don't I don't know if that's a great choice because it's one that I am likely to play, not out of yeah, interest for that's the true. core yeah. game itself, but out of uh, needing to uh, feel closure with loving the Arkham trilogy. That is that is interesting. Mm-hmm. You've sensed my gambit here, Frank. What I wanted to do by the end of this segment is pick the game that you were most likely to actually play Why? and therefore <laughs> validate my choice as the best choice. Oh, I see. Well, it ain't that one. Okay. What do we got here? There's a bunch of games. Yeah, there's a bunch there's of a them. a bunch of games. And you know what? They're not even all revealed yet. So, I mean, we don't even know all of the games coming out in 2024. No, certainly we do not. I'm trying to think of one. My angle is get Frank to play something that I think people on the show might want to hear about on the list yeah. but which I don't want to play that's I... so that cuz cuz then we we expand the spread of the list so I'm thinking about the list and so yeah. I don't know how fra- far Frank will get in this but my suggestion is going to be Dragon's Dogma 2 ooh, ooh drag dog drag dog drag that dog I don't want to play it but wait wait why don't why don't you why don't you want to play it because it's what's wrong um, with you? what's what's, uh, what's <laughs> you know it's a, we, we all know my my antipathy toward certain kinds of 3D action games yeah Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Brandon doesn't play any game that bears the name of a Kevin Smith movie. That's his It doesn't movie. have an apostrophe S in it? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Are you one of those people who mistakenly uh, has the impression that uh, Dragon's Dogma feels like a Souls game? No. No, I'm not. Because it doesn't. It's it's definitely old school Capcom brawler in 3D. I think you should play Dragon's Dogma okay. too, dude. All right. So maybe that's what that's what we do instead. Is I have to play that. <laughs> maybe All you right. should play that one. All but right, also, let's... I think everybody should play it because I'm going to. Uh, I was just playing the first one. There's an alone in the dark game. I feel like Frank wouldn't necessarily choose to play it, but if presented with it, would then do it. You know what I mean? I should clarify that, like that's true of most games. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't dislike video games. Uh, I just don't find time for them. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. We're, that's why we're just we're trying to find one for you to spend right. eight hours. Well, on. I'm just I'm just clarifying right. that, like, the, uh, I'm, I'm responding to something Brandon was uh, possibly insinuating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the the yeah. only games that I I know I don't want to play would would be more um, strategic games. That that's something that I just don't care for. Yeah. What do you consider a strategic uh, video game? What's too strategic for you? I have to think two moves ahead. Do you consider a Persona game to be too strategic for you? Never played one. So really, yeah, yeah. It's Persona non grata. I, I did almost suggest Persona Three just to get Frank like. Like fr- play a persona game. through the Yakuza pipeline into a persona. Yeah, right, but, yeah. Ne- but you're kind of wasting a new game on a remake. It's oh. a remake, but it is Absolutely. it is a bold, complete remake, though. Okay. Like uh, okay. they they brought it up to the uh, uh, you know we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about quality levels here, but uh, you know for you know at risk of enraging someone okay. uh, in the listenership, but uh, uh, they brought it up to the production value standards of Persona Five. It's uh, they just produced it as though it were a new Persona game. It's 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 very nice, but I wouldn't recommend that one. The one I would recommend. Frank, you loved that Link's Awakening remake, right? It's it's like no, that. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, this uh, Persona remake, which comes out tomorrow, as of this recording, by the way, it comes out tomorrow, which is good because that means you would then have uh, ten months. Uh, I mean, you'd have a whole year to play it uh, before we record the game of the year 2024 episode. You'd have a whole year to throw eight hours into that game. I also want to clarify that it's not like I don't have time; it's I don't I make time, right? Yeah, so, you, you, this, if, this is if the- someone was like, "I need you to play a game tonight," I'd be like, "All right." 
<laughs> I'm fine with that. This is an exercise in making time ahead of time and sure. also an exercise in making a little bit of internet content. Uh, so uh, the, the Persona comes out tomorrow, but that's not the game I would recommend. I would recommend if you've never played a Persona and you've played uh, you've played the Yakuza's, are you going to play that? You're going to play that Yakuza 8, uh, Like a Dragon 8, Infinite Wealth, probably, right? You're probably going to get around to that. Yeah, right. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's that. That one is not uh, on the recommendation uh, slate uh, for that reason. Um, I would recommend you play another Sega Atlas uh, RPG that's also not a Persona, but you could play a Persona if you really wanted to try one. Three is a really good one to start with. Yeah. But you play that on your own time as a fan of Yakuza. The game I'm going to recommend to you is there's only one game that I see uh, being game of the year for me this year. I called my game of the year last year this year 2024 2020 this year yeah the year yeah. we living in right now yeah the year that's already a month old uh there's only one game i see is my game of the year and it's not unicorn overlord uh the new uh game by vanillaware it's not even rise of the ronin uh which looks completely awesome uh, in oh, case i thought I'm it was rise of the roni okay rise of the roni uh, it's about to chef boyardee and yeah. Yeah, the invention of beef and roni uh, it's the God. it's the san francisco treat is what it i is. was gonna get yeah, it. it's it's an open world game in san francisco and you need to discover the secret yeah you gotta find the treats no it's a, it's it's chef boyardee versus the rice of roni people uh, mm. uh to establish who has roni supremacy is uh <laughs> is, it, is, is it a platform fighter rise of the roni and then sequel two is called the the roni supremacy yeah uh, yeah i get it that's uh what rise of the ronin looks pretty good yeah it's it looks like uh they made like uh, they, they did an assassin's a, creed they took a assassin's creed but made it a jrpg yeah uh, but also a souls looks uh, very tasty to me and uh daddy's gonna put his big bib on for that one the game of the year for me is not even princess peach showtime it's not even au den 100 heroes because i feel like the producers should have they could have added eight more uh, they could have. That's that's their whole thing. They could have added eight more. It's not Ubisoft's much ballyhooed, oft delayed skull and bones. Uh, more a punchline than a video game at this point. My game of the year. There's only one game of the year. There's a game. Hold of on, the year hold for on. Me. Can I guess what you're going to say? Yeah. What is it? It's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Oh, that was the punchline. No. no, it absolutely is not. No, the <laughs> game of the year for me. Hundred million percent. There's only one game I can look at and think about and say, Holy Lord, that's the game for me. And it's a, a game by Atlas called Metaphor Refantasio, which Ooh. is a... Uh, yeah, I've been looking at that. It's, it's, it's going to be difficult to remember that name, especially because the release date has not been confirmed. That really um, sounds like more like a DS game than something that would come out. <laughs> pretty, well, it's it's fall. So I've, I've been paying fall, very yeah. close attention to uh, the release of that game. Oh, no. The release of uh, this Persona game and the release of any other Atlas game because I need to figure out exactly what date to release Demon School, and that it needs to be as far away from those as possible. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Sega themselves released uh, uh, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, uh, one exactly one week before Persona 3 Reload. So all bets are off, Carl. Yeah. Uh, Indeed, all bets man. are off. Like, Sega's willing to release two $70, 100-hour video games within... Uh, essentially what counts for five minutes of one another. Yeah. But they're giving Metaphor Refantasio a good nine months. Yeah, they're giving it a good slot. So I, uh, that's the game I think uh, if you, it, it, it's it's yeah. it's the new game from the makers of Persona 3, 4, and 5. And it's action. It's oddly not called Persona 6. It has action combat, but it also has turn-based combat. And it just, it, it looks to be uh, just kind of a beautifully defamiliarized take on uh, Western fantasy uh, and also anime fantasy. Mm. And it just kind of looks like a really, really tasty game designerly thing that's got some neat narrative stuff to it. And I think that's going to be my game of the year. But it, then Frank doesn't need to play it necessarily. But uh, no, 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 no. I'm saying if Frank plays it, then I don't have to mention. I don't have to bring it up. I've got a. I've got one here. What you got punished somebody for? Oh no, Funko Fusion. I yeah, got yeah, Funko I Fusion. That. I got Funko God, Fusion. You can play as mm. Umbrella Academy. Funkos, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Battlestar Galactica, the thing. Funkos. I'm uh, actually interested now that I know there's Umbrella Academy Funkos and also Battlestar Galactica Funkos. Is that a The Mummy Funko? And that looks like a Kurt Russell in The Thing Funko. <laughs> it's Kurt Russell in The Thing Funko. That looks uh, that looks really, uh, you know, the only thing. Uh... Ah! Well, there we go. I promise I won't do it in mid-sentence so as to surprise you. Uh, ever so, again. Okay, so is, is there a conclusion here? <laughs> that's, uh, that's what the buzzer's for. The buzzer's for. Call it. What do you got? I'm going to come up with something for you, Frank. Okay. Well, no, it's got to happen right now. Yeah. 
what better place than here? What better time than now? As Rage Against the Machine well, once said. There's a lot of games I, w- I want Frank to play. I would love. I, I think it would be fun for him to play Earth Defense Force 6. Oh, wow. But uh, it's not necessary. There's, there's, there's 800 billion trillion of those. Okay, Earth Defense Force 6. Metaphor. Game with the weird name. Metaphor. Tim said. Refantasio. Metaphor, refantasio. And then, um, what, what did you have, Jaffe? Oh, Suicide Squad killed Suicide the Justice Squad, League. But yeah, okay. with me. Got it. That's the important part. Oh, that, that's that's a hard part, too, because I, I don't like playing games with people. Yeah. Or you could play Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah. Oh, Dragon's Dogma 2. I forgot yeah. about that. With Jaffe and me. That's and true. And no, no one's going to recommend the Prince of Persia game I want to play. So no, well, no, no, out. because I we figured, figured you'd that's play that. a, you, yeah. you, you, you're some kind of a Rayman <laughs> Origins guy would want to play that. Here's here's the trailer for Metaphor Refantasio if you want to just watch a trailer. All right. And uh, just put it on on silent and just look I'll at that. I'll watch that offline. I will say that that is the one I'm most interested in because it is partially from a like the least yeah. likely for me to pick up on my own. It's like, got yeah. a calendar, yeah. so it is a Persona game. Yeah, it's it's basically a new Persona game. I mean, someone's, again, someone's going to beat me up for saying that, but it, it's the new Persona game. It's got a calendar. It's got social links. It's, it's Persona, baby. The one that I wanted to mention but i you know i can't actually recommend it because apparently it's the, like the misogyny studio but that oh, uh my. that uh that wukong legends game i think would be an interesting one black myth wukong yeah the misogyny studio yeah just a, just a, a lot of reports about their treatment of women that studio yeah so that that interesting so that uh, it, it makes <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, that brings us to question, 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 question number two. Question number two is uh, for Brandon Sheffield. Hey, that's me. Brandon Sheffield, when are you going to stop <laughs> playing video games? When do you think you're going to stop playing video games? Uh, because I, I encountered this uh, yesterday while watching the Sony State of Play event. Oh. And mm-hmm. there were several things in there that made me feel like and, you know, we talk about uh, Hoyoverse on the show a lot. I know we talk about Honkai Star Rail all the time on this show. We talk about Genshin Impact yeah. all the time. We talk about Fortnite. We yeah. talk about uh, Playosphere or whatever that game's called. Pal World, right? We, we talk about these things. PUBG, Roblox. Uh, you do kind of feel occasionally, uh, discoursively, you feel a little underwater these days as a as a person in their in their 40s right yeah do you ever feel like you just don't play video games anymore which i know obviously i play video games every day but i I watched this thing yesterday and it started with this trailer for this game in keeping with the theme of putting myself outside of my comfort zone this trailer because that's what the first question was about trying to get frank out of his comfort zone and also let him enjoy a video game uh i'm getting out of my comfort zone and i'm just going to talk about a video game that i would never talk about uh, there's no reason I would ever bring this up in conversation because it went right in one eyeball and out the other. And uh, boy, are my arms tired from whatever that was. There was this game called Stellar Blade. Are you all familiar with this game? I saw that it was mm. talked about briefly, but no. It's a Sony computer entertainment, Sony interactive entertainment, or as they, you can't even call them Sony computer entertainment anymore. Mm. Well, I actually didn't know that. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Sony Interactive Entertainment. It's a, it's a game a published by them, Sony PlayStation Studios. Uh, it's a Korean video game, and it has character design, world building, and art. It just has everything from the 2000s on up. The action looks decent, but they've got some voiceover narrator explaining uh, Angel is uh, a nickname that people have given pilots from the rebel squadron or whatever like explaining this stuff to me it's just so much noise yeah like like it's game noise there's so much game noise right and i was watching this trailer and i was just foreseeing and this wukong game made me feel similarly right Mm. but i didn't articulate it in my head as well as the this uh this stellar blade game it just made me feel like i mean i know I'm, i'm past the statistical midpoint of my life right uh, I'm now dying more often than I am living, right? It's fine. It's perfect. It's, it's, it, it is what it is. Uh, lamest sentence in the English language. It is what it is. Can't be helped. There's a lot of stuff that I'm just going to, I'm seeing stuff now and I'm just saying I'm never going to touch that, right? It's happening yeah. a lot. It is happening a lot with movies, TV shows. No, no backloggers remorse whatsoever. I just, uh, I'm never going to engage with that. And it just gives a sort of a stench of wistfulness to the trailer. 
right? I'm watching the trailer and I'm just like, this isn't for me. It's slipping, slipping through your fingers as you, as you see it. It's slipping through my mind's fingers, my fingers, yeah. fingers, my toes, you know? It's yeah, like if, tears uh, in rain on the beach through my toes in the waves, right? It's tragic. And then what happens next is after this trailer, what was there a trailer for? Y'all remember this? If you watch this thing, there was a trailer for that Silent Hill 2 remake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which uh, in another life and just another roll of the dice, this would have been exciting, right? But instead, it was an avalanche of, I'm never going to touch this feelings. It was an avalanche of, maybe I don't play video games anymore. And uh, I don't know. How do you feel about this, Brandon Sheffield? When are you, I, I say it to you as someone with more video games visible in the background of yeah. your webcam than anyone else here. Yeah. When do you think you're going to stop playing video games? What's what's the point? What what is what's it going to be for you? So I, I, I've thought about something sort of uh, tangential to this. I was in the shower and uh, and I bonked my toe. And I immediately thought my toe, my toe, which is uh, a reference to a classic video Teenage game. Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. And then I had the thought. In like already, people don't understand why I would say that. Like it's, exactly. it's like two yeah. in universe in my universe of a reference two in my age group that uh, if I if I said that in front of a thirteen year old they would yeah. be like a Gen Alpha they would they would mace you they would instantly mace you without even asking they wouldn't even know why I did it yeah which makes sense no explanation they would ask no explanation they would mace you you could have said talk about bonk's revenge and uh, you might have gotten. No, you would get the same reaction. Well, they, they could have looked that up. Normally, when I bonk my toe, I think, <gasps> so that's uh, what I so, think. And then I was thinking, okay, so my friend's kids right now, they're going to be making skibbity toilet references when they're 40. And yeah, yeah, and, exactly, and exactly. The, the kids below them are going to be like, you freaking talking about a toilet? What are you doing? So I was I was thinking about this kind of thing and how like, and for example, a game that seems perfectly good people like it i appreciate that it has like it, it was made in scope with a low number of assets and it and it does it's not visually beautiful lethal company is a game that is just incredibly massively popular mm -hmm. yeah and it's it's made by an indie team which is the sort of thing that i should aspire toward because they've made money and they will have a success in their life big old success yeah i don't want to i don't want to play it and it's not their fault and it's not exactly my fault. And you don't either. want to play it, and you certainly don't want to make it. I don't want to make it. That's the biggest question for me. When do I realize my irrelevance for making games? Because the kinds of games that are being popular, I have just no interest in making. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say to your credit, uh, which uh, you know is uh, you know this is a big deal. I'm about to say something, <laughs> Brandon. Chef, yeah, it's credit. Uh, to your credit. <laughs> There you go. I just went ahead and uh, spiced it, tasted it up a little bit. To your credit, uh, the fact that your first reflex is to say, I don't want to play this and I also don't want to make it, means you're not evil. So, <laughs> Thanks. Um, because uh, there's a large number of evil people out there who are like, oh, yeah. I'll make this, I'll make this. Trying to do a fast follow on, on the popular yeah, thing. If I might add something. Let's hear it. Well, that's 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 what you're here for. The fact that uh, in just the last question, you were strategizing when you should release your game yeah. in relation to another game that will be very popular this mm -hmm. year indicates you're still on some kind of pulse. Yeah. Sure. Well, I have to pay attention. And so I think that's going to keep me aware for longer as long as I'm making these video games. And so I guess it's kind of related. Like maybe when I stop making them, is when I s stop thinking, uh, you, you know, there's another, another aspect of this is this, this probably sounds very silly to the listeners of this podcast, but I have been spending a lot of my spare time in the last two months playing video games that came out in 2023 because I want to do a good job for this game of the year podcast and play mm -hmm. the things that I think I should have played. And some of the things that the show thinks I should, listeners of the show think I should have played. And uh, as I will bring up again during the event itself, I couldn't play games for nine months because of my wrist. Yeah. And so I'm catching up on these things. And it's a really weird experience to play four to six hours of a video game, decide which ones I like and want to come back to later. But it's a little stressful because I can't just keep going because I got to get through more of them. Yeah. But doing them in a really condensed 
way like that does kind of give me a little like you you play Starfield and you're like okay it's one of these I don't play <laughs> and then you play you play um a vania of some sort and you're like okay this is one of these mm-hmm. to me it starts to boil down to which ones of these is is going to keep getting me and which one isn't so like when I start a vania type game if it doesn't insult me too much i'm like i'll just play through this yeah because it's it it feels like just a thing i can do i can just keep keep going i'm moving through the world i'm hitting things i'm jumping around it's real easy i don't know what the actual tipping point is for me but i think it's probably going to be when i don't feel that i need to pay attention to the industry anymore is probably when i'll stop playing new games yeah that's, and that's we'll just like casually play through like gunstar heroes again sometimes or something like that yeah i uh you know this is uh I, i'm trying to kind of lay uh, plant a bunch of seeds for stuff i'm gonna end up probably bringing up in the game of the year episode myself but it's uh mm-hmm. you know i have uh i've fallen into a state of immunity from reading reviews and caring what people think about games mm. but when i see something and i know it's legit I'll be like, all right, I'm going to play that. And last year, there were a whole bunch of those, right? There were yeah. a whole bunch of games last year where I was like, wow, that's legit. I'm going to play that. Like, it's it's just a, a legit, luxuriously, extremely well-made thing, like, for me. But then you start doing a little basic math, and I came to this grim realization that 2023 was, it was for me, and uh, it was mm. for us, Yeah, right? And there might not be too many more years where mm-hmm. the AAA games are for us. For us yeah. Right? Yeah. And I was like, just doing some basic math. You know, anybody, anybody with access to a web browser, look up the release dates of Baldur's Gate 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 of, <laughs> yeah. of, uh, of Street Fighter, let's say Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 6, Diablo 2 and Diablo 4. And let's start looking at looking the, into these things and just figuring out what multiples of ten are hot. And it's just like I think uh, I think they're giving us a funeral. <laughs> I think it's a funeral. <laughs> I think it's a nursing home invitation. Kind of related to that. Here's a game that I didn't play, but which made me think about this. There's this game, uh, Immortals of Avaim. Have you, yeah. you, you heard yeah, about yeah. this one? Yeah, so yeah. okay, this is a game that I heard about for the first time during a summer of gaming or game awards, whenever uh, it was on a Keeley thing, I heard about it then. And then the second time I heard about it was a couple days ago when it was announced that they laid off half their staff because nobody bought the game. And it was apparently already out for uh, four, five months. Right. It was like a EA access game pass thing, something like that. And it was a single player narrative focused triple A uh, first person magic game. I got, I was so excited watching the trailer for it when it was announced during the game. I was, I was gonna, like, Ooh. it like uh, seems cool. And I just didn't. It's for me. I, and then I never heard about it until yeah. I heard about it not selling. Nobody. And, yeah. I, I was going to bring that up. The fact that we're seeing all of these enormous layoff announcements in the past year or two is a pretty obvious indication that we're not going to be seeing the same level of video game releases that we've seen over the past few years. But we might be seeing them only from China and Korea and uh, places outside of here. We might see them from Poland still. I think we will still see them, but they won't I don't think they'll be coming from American studios, which is fine. But it is going to it's going to be weird because we might not have the kind of perspectives that you do get from American studios where they try to be better about race or gender or things a little bit. Like there's been a a trend toward trying to care about it. And we might see that backslide a little bit, I would say. Because like you can look at that Blade thingies, whatever you're talking about. What was that game called, Tim? Stellar Blade. Stellar Blade. First of all, the logo is great. If you look at the logo, it's nice. You watch a character running around in Stellar Blade, you cannot help but look at the butt of the female oh, character yeah. that is yeah. running. And you're like, that is a Korean butt animation. There's just no question. KBA, yeah. People ask me what the difference is between near and near automata, and I told them it's a butt. The crack, yeah. Yeah, it's a butt. Yeah. So um like the that <laughs> that is the kind of thing that uh is probably gonna shift in the coming years, is is you get that more of that. You think it's weird that in one year we are seeing two games called Stellar Blade and Earth Blade 
Yeah. Uh, well, that's what we're going to be talking about uh, <laughs> in uh, question three. Uh, question oh, number boy. three. Before um, you ask this question, I'm sensing a pattern here, and I'm feeling a little bit of dread because my particular comfort zone is infinitesimal. Not being directly asked questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, you mentioned the game Earthblade, which is a game coming out this year. It looks like just one of the greatest games of all time uh, that I'm assuming Frank's going to play this one. You liked Celeste, right, Frank? Yeah. It's the new game from the makers of Celeste. Mm, okay. I didn't know that. And not only that, even even Brandon might like this. This is actually a stealth even me. candy date for uh, uh, insert credit game of the year 2024, now that I think about it. It's Earthblade. It's a stealth candidate. It could actually make it because it's a, it's, it's a Metroidvania. Uh, it's but a it's a Metroidvania in a sort of a a sort of a PC engine, yeah. Falcom, a uh, Dragon Slayer. Oh, you're just trying to sell it style. to me. <laughs> no, I, I love Celeste. So, like a Matty Thorson Metroidvania is handmade yeah. for me. A Mattyvania? Yeah, Matty-vania. I think it's going to be a game that is a little bit more uh, more fun to play for people who think they're afraid of difficult challenges as well as what it looks like. I do like fun. It looks like a good game. So in other words, what I'm talking about is, you know, just when I think I'm they, I'm out, they pull me back in. That's right. Which is uh, at the conclusion of this Sony thing yesterday. And I'm sorry for just like this Sony thing just kind of became a, a hotbed of topics. It really felt like a sort of a sort of a God darn event that just kind of it, there were a lot of horsemen of the apocalypse that I, mm. I glimpsed during this Sony event. And one of them was, and this is in keeping with the theme of when, when am I going to stop playing video games? Uh, did you all see the Hideo Kojima stuff from yesterday? I saw that it happened, but I didn't watch I it. I did. I watched it in preparation of this show. Oh, uh, well, uh, let me, let me explain briefly for the uninitiated. Hideo Kojima, they showed, they, they closed the Sony event yesterday, the 40 minute event with a 10 minute trailer for Death Stranding 2, mm-hmm. right. which was announced as being a game that is being worked on and had some promo stuff released for it. The 10 minute trailer for Death Stranding 2 viewed in 4K60 on YouTube on your uh, the largest television possible will bring you, yes you, all the way back to the E3s of your when Kojima was releasing big wacky just bonkers trailers. It'll bring you all the way back. I mean, there's so much in there. The first thing you see is George Miller, director of Mad Max, uh is is in there and he's wearing <laughs> a weird hat and he has a strange uh, like eight FPS, like cat made out of tar on his shoulder. And you're just like, I'm too high for this just instantly. <laughs> right. Nobody, yeah. it's, it's, it's like, you can't, you can't be not too high for this game, which, which is, you know, it's a conundrum. So Kojima reveals all this 10 minutes. And it's not Kojima, you know, it's at the end, it is revealed the trailer was edited by Hideo Kojima, uh, which is very funny that he's taking credit for editing his game trailers the past five years. It, it looks like a game that's more or less done. You know, it's supposed to come out in 2025, et cetera, et cetera. After that, Kojima came on camera with Herman Hulst, head of PlayStation Studios, and he did something that just when my faith was completely shellacked by Stellar Blade and there's a free to play Silent Hill game that's basically PT but they put a bunch of like Apple Arcade game graphics all yeah. over it. Did you yeah. see this? Yeah. Like they took PT and they just threw some stuff in there and they made it about TikTok or whatever. Like it 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 doesn't make any sense. And then it just you know continually just spiraling death spiraling with the reveal of this uh with the Silent Hill 2 remake graphics uh, trailer. It was just taking me back to my heyday in video games. And then I saw this Kojima thing Kojima showed Death Stranding 2, and then they bring him on camera. And what he did on camera was something that, again, brought me back to vintage Kojima and made me excited, which is that god darn guy. He's a cheese ball, you know? He's a god darn cheese ball. But what he did was he said, I would like to announce another game. In addition to the game I'm making for the Xbox, for, he like mentions Xbox during a PlayStation thing. And then in addition to Death Stranding 2, I'm also making a stealth action game a military stealth action game, right? Very funny. Yeah. He just announced after this Silent Hill 2 trailer that he fully intends to rip off Metal Gear Solid, <laughs> yeah. right? And he he announced it, which is like a film director thing to be right. like, I've had this cowboy script I've been kicking around for a couple of years just to mention during an interview, but he turned it into a video game megaton announcement by saying, we're making a stealth game. It's underway. Mm-hmm. I've got Hollywood talent. It's it's happening. And uh, 
it was just, it was very enthralling to just suddenly have this whiplash and be like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in <laughs> like, I, I'm a, I'm a gamer dude. Right. But then what he said next blew my mind even further. <laughs> He said they're going to begin development as soon as Death Stranding is out. He's basically saying we're going to rip off Metal Gear Solid. Konami, you have two years to cry about it. Is basically what he said. In in <laughs> you know in, in 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 nicer, gentler terms, he said this. But then he said at the end that it is the greatest thing he will ever make. It is the best thing he has ever made. The greatest thing he will ever make, and it will be a fitting capstone to his career. Oh, and I instantly, instantly got avalanched. By uh, ah, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to be a gamer for long. Because when Kojima goes, maybe I go. You know, maybe maybe when Kojima goes, you know, am I still going to be there, or, is, or am I going to let Kojima turn out the lights? Right. So uh, that's uh, that, I don't know what that is, but that's uh, that's something that I revealed is uh, we're just continuing this this fatalism theme here on the show. I'm not sure how to answer this question. That's good. That's good. You're not supposed to be. <laughs> this is bringing you back. The ice is broken. Yeah. So the ice is broken, Carl. I do wonder if he's looking at Tarantino's, I'm going to make X number of movies. Ten movies, Ooh, yeah. yeah. And thinking about a similar thing for himself. Can I just say that's tacky as heck, the I'm going to make ten movies thing? I would agree. He's been saying it for 20-some years. It's It's been tacky the whole time. Breaking your silence. But I think yeah. uh, I'm fine with there not being too many. I, I, I think his, uh, for me... His voice is losing relevance in a way that I'm fine with him being done. Unless he's got some more in the tank that I don't know about. Tarantino or Kojima? Tarantino. Okay. Oh, Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. I think Tarantino's, uh, he's largely left his imprint on the culture. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he's done what he needed to do. Oh, I remembered what the what the question framing is here. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd like. If you'd like. A, a few minutes prior to this Kojima thing was the reveal of... Uh, Here's here's the thing. I don't know if it was the reveal. I don't know if people knew about it already, but uh, there was the reveal of the new Ken Levine game. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's a new Bioshock. His yeah. new studio. It's basically he's making Bioshock again. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also System Shock. It's got uh, kind of Annapurna looking characters, whatever that means. Judas. Mm. It's called Judas, which is, uh, I wonder what he's uh, uh what he's alluding to here um yeah. so the 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 framing of this question is when am i going to get into the new testament or something like that why <laughs> why aren't there uh why aren't there more kojimas and also it turns out kojima was the opposite of the killer all along in my opinion he was the opposite of the murderer this is an inverse mystery here he was the good guy all along i think yeah it's it's pretty weird how For me. Certain certain people can they can both get the money to make a triple A game and also to whatever degree you agree with this, they can deliver it. Like Ken Levine, we can make fun of a uh, Bioshock plenty, and we do. But yeah. he does deliver a Bioshock at the yeah. end of the day. And that's what people want out of him. And he's like, Okay, I'm making a new I'm making a new thingy shock. Here it is. And yeah. uh I think that that's fine, but I don't know that there's a new equivalent of that. Like, if d- does that FNAF yeah. guy have a different FNAF that he's going to make? I'm going to make a controversial statement. Six Nights at Freddy's. Yeah. Here's something I've long thought, putting my foot down. It is harder to make a video game than it is to make a movie. When you're making a video game, I especially a large-scale one, yeah. you end up having to make a lot more compromises to actually put something out than yeah. someone who makes a movie does. There's a lot of compromises with the movies to to like people above you, but I think I think the big difference is the mechanisms for making a movie what what with their unions and their specific methodologies is much more known. You're not re, you're not making a new movie every time. You're right. you're you're using the framework of other movies and you know everyone knows what a grip is everyone knows what a best boy. what a best boy is everyone knows how the how the uh, assistant director works more or less the best boy is Kendall Roy in case anybody was wondering whereas <laughs> in video games somebody has to build and maintain a team and make sure they work together well every time from scratch uh, unless your team has been working together for years like every yeah. every time a new indie team is formed, everybody has to figure out how to work together and what their job is, in addition to then doing the job. Yeah. And can they even do it well? And with the, obviously the interactivity thing, 
just just blows the whole thing up because nobody we talk about like auteur video games and when we talk about that it's we're talking about either a familiar mechanic or a familiar narrative or both but uh it's easier to have a style in a movie because you as a director or as an editor or as a cinematographer control everything that is being seen right and in video games you simply cannot unless you're making something where the camera never moves where there's very little player interactivity there are very few people who make a full game themselves on yeah. a large scale well and th- and that's where i was gonna go like i think like a bennett foddy or a maddie thorsten you know to me that's the same thing as a hideo kojima yeah um it's, right. just, it's just much smaller scale i think kojima and levine are that but also they know how to get people to give them money and i think that's yeah. the only real difference uh between well, i think those. bennett Foddy knows how to get people to give him money because he made that sure. getting over a game and got people got money directly from from normal people yeah, he, he got money straight from the well, i mean i'd true. also like you know jonathan blow david cage you know on, on the, the other ends of the spectrum yeah. oh, right? like, oh we got we got a david the, cage man so the, <laughs> oh, so that's uh that's too bad that's, a that's telling one. thing from the history of this podcast is whenever i ask a who is the blank of video games question it's always yeah it's yeah. always either Kojima or Cage. That's the dichotomy. I think another another aspect of this is that once you've done something successful as a video game director and the legacy press has gotten it into everyone's brain, Ken Levine made this game, H- Hideo Kojima made this game, even though that's false and it's a team effort, it does actually get into the brains of everyone to where people working on a Ken Levine game are like, I know what that is and I know how to go in that direction. Mm -hmm, I know what a Kojima game basically is. It's only possible to have an auteur vision in a video game when you're either very small team or you're a big team that's run by somebody who you understand what their style is supposed to be according to these rules we've prescribed. Right. So we've got basically who 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 do we've got? We've got David Cage, you know, again, that's a that's a neutral reference to him. We've got Ken Levine. Yeah. We've got Hideo Kojima. Yeah. I would argue uh, Tetsuya Nomura, mm-hmm. uh, Kingdom Hearts. I do think Cliff Cliff Lazinski, he were he he fits in there. Oh yeah, but he's not he's not still making actively making new stuff. Yep. So it's like these these people have a strong style that if you were to apply for a job working for them, you would imagine any job applicant would tell him during the interview i love your games i've played yeah, them yeah right you imagine that uh, so they're all on the same page but it's like watching this ken levine trailer which i found uh you know i played all the bioshocks and i've made fun of them a lot but i can say that this new ken levine joint looks it looks just utterly gutless like no offense to it it, it looks uh uh gutless is kind of a mean word joyless is that meaner or less mean soulless it just looks very very heartless I would say gutless is the meanest of those. I think gutless. Uh, well, I think it's also the most accurate. Well, I think it looks very gutless. Is it like Levine yeah. covering Levine kind of? Yeah, feel? it it's like Levine. So it's like a modern Spielberg movie, like or late Frank Miller. It's like Levine on Levine on Levine. It's yeah. got that double A budget sort of graphic style, but with triple A looking sort of money. I think it's a, a small team, but it's a. It's a very perplexing thing to look at. It looks like the outer worlds, but uh, kitschier and also. I don't want to get into it. There's <laughs> there's all these games now that have learned from Ken Levine and moved on, right? I, I see the Death Stranding two trailer, and I'm like, oh, he's still there. Kojima is all he's mm-hmm. all still there. He's still bonkers. He's still doing wild, wacky stuff, and he's still innovating. And something that I worry about with my own stuff. When I look at things like that, I worry that I don't give myself and my team enough time to do something weird. I feel myself slotting into n- normalcy sometimes, yeah. and I, I know that that's a way to fail. I call that my macaroni and cheese. Is, um, is to just get into the groove, and it can be hard to be like, okay, I know I need to make this more interesting. I know I need to surprise people i know i need to do something that they won't expect but how to do that continues to to elude me like i find sometimes that when i'm describing something that i've done in the story of demon school for example describing it 
it sounds funny and wacky and different and weird. But then when you actually look at what I've written, it's so like in the world and normalized that I well, don't that, think it even reads as weird. I mean, that's, that's the struggle of any creative endeavor, I think, right? Is that yeah. like, it's so hard to capture the raw idea sometimes, you know? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's anything. Mm-hmm. Like, like so many things that I've done, it's like when I describe it, it's way better than it actually is. And, mm-hmm. and it's like Sharknado you know. uh, is, is, is like, right. it's fun to play, but like to describe it is even more fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't play it. I mean, you can't, I guess. But, but exactly, right? Like, like the ideas that I put in there were fun ideas, and it was just a dumb thing we made. But like, it's it's way funnier to hear me talk about it than to actually play it. Yeah. I love having made games that people can't play. I genuinely yeah. love it. It's it's very fun. You had to be there, I man. I don't mind. It's actually in the spirit of that one that you can't play it. So I'm good with it. That's art. That's that's good. I'm, we're going to do question <laughs> number four, and it's going to be a fast one. So. Here- I honestly, honestly meant to press the question button. So question. <laughs> four. Question number four. This this is just continuing from this. Hideo Kojima is 60 years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he's talking about the capstone of his career. Last year, 2023, we had several films came out by 80-year-old men. Yeah, it's, this is happening in the movie industry as well. And it was some of the best work of all of their careers. Michael Mann with his Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Hayao Miyazaki's not, he's not 80 yet, uh, but but we'll give it to him. Uh, well, he's an honorary octogenarian. Honorary. And uh, Martin Scorsese, an 80-year-old man. He made a movie that, uh, they're just, there's 80-year-old men out there reckoning with their entire lives and producing some of the best art of their careers at age 80. We have yet, unless you count the music from Dragon Quest, uh, but which is, you know, grim, grim tidings here. Uh, we have yet to experience an 80 year old video game creative, right? Am I, uh, Frank, would you know about this? Would you know more about this than me? Uh, uh, do you know off I the mean, top of your like, head? I, I, w- I would go straight to Dragon Quest, so no. Yeah, yeah. So that's the, we, we've got it. We've got a 70 year old working on Dragon like we've Quest. Got, I mean, Miyamoto doesn't make games anymore. And he's yeah, not Miyamoto's, he's off and he's, uh, he's basically, he, he's going to retire. At, at some he point. He doesn't make games, he makes deals, you know? He makes money. Yeah. Miyamoto makes that cash. And we got a lot of um, He's a folks man. who are much older in games who are sad that they can't make games anymore because people don't seem to want them uh, because they're perceived as too old, etc. Yeah. Can I just point out a little a little side thing that how bizarre it is the older one gets you know, again we're in the we're in the geriatric podcast zone here the older one gets the less older than you all of your favorite game creators become yeah oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. like K- kojima is uh less than 20 years older than me he used to be like 20 whole years older than me but right. now he's less than 20 years old than me <laughs> like <laughs> he, it doesn't make sense right he's he, he he used to be a guy i could never consider having a conversation with because i was 15 and he was 35 right, but we have become peers through yeah when I, exactly because yeah. we've gotten older when i met kojima for the first time i was 24 right oh yeah, yeah that's huge he's spread. 16 yeah. years older than me he was 40 yeah, and I was a forty-year-old guy. Now right. it's like I could I could probably chill with that guy. But then again, you look at his Instagram; literally anybody can chill with Kojima. Like, <laughs> like everybody chills with him. It's incredible. Yeah, it's amazing. His whole life is a strand game. It, it's weird thinking about cer- certain people, like uh, Jake Kasdahl, for example. He worked on Res. He was at Sega in the late '90s, and he worked on things that were part of or peripheral to seminal growing up video game experiences for me, but he's like nine years older than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it's incredibly weird. We're like basically the same age. <laughs> it, it's weird to encounter uh, all these people and, and just realize just how close in age you were to all these people. I'm just sharing a photo yeah. in the in the in the the host only room here of I young Yuji Hori for him. You mm-hmm. know, like it, we're, <laughs> it's That's just a pic different. of young Yuji Hori. Uh, That's a cool picture. What a cool dude. Yeah, what a cool dude. Yeah, and now he's 70 years old. How old was he in this photo? We won't say. But he's yeah. 70 years old now, working on Dragon Quest Eight or, or 12. Same thing. But so the, the question with the, with, the, with the movies to the video games, what, what will the... Who will the first 80-year-old 
Yeah. Yeah. What What will it be like? Uh, and who's your money on? Right. Who's your money on? Tim and Schaefer. Frank's immediate go to of Yuji Hori was going to be mine. Uh, Yuji Hori is he's going to he will be eighty years old and he will make a video game. Yeah. And Japan will a hundred percent let him and they'll love it. Oh man, I have I have a sad one. A sad who's, one. Who's uh basically eighty and uh, can't get a game funded is the 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 Puyo Puyo guy. The guy who came up with Puyo Puyo. <laughs> the guy whose name you don't uh, mention. The guy whose name I don't remember. The Puyo Puyo I don't guy. remember what his name is, uh, which is um, you know my fault and yeah, everyone else's fault also. Thing, yeah. um, but he, he's he been trying to get like another puzzle game out there, but he's like got no money and uh, working at an old folks home to help people who are slightly older than him to get some income. And he's just living mm. in a one, one room apartment. And, uh, but he still wants to make games. He still wants, he still to. wants to. And so that's a shame. I feel like the kind of game that he might make is kind of just like recapturing. He wants to recapture the glory and that isn't going to probably, that's probably why he can't get it funded because, people aren't excited to buy a, like a last last gasp they want like your final statement they want like the the period that you're going to put on the sentence so who who has that in there they don't want some inscrutable punctuation mark that they don't immediately understand yeah, they don't right? really know yeah. what that punctuation it's like a tilde what did you put that on there and uh i think yuji hori is is a good one. I do think that Kojima, um, he says he's going to quit, but will he? He didn't specifically, he didn't say he was going to quit. He just said, this will be like the crowning achievement of my career, which sounds like he's going to, yeah. He's yeah. intending to retire. But seeing as George Miller is is in the opening seconds of his trailer, George Miller famously yeah. 99 year old. He's not 99 years old. George Miller's an old man. Yeah. He's an 99. old dude. Uh, and he's making two new Mad Max movies, one which is coming out in a couple of months, which is bonkers. But I, th- I think one of the big differences is that a lot of filmmakers, they are like, I have this story I need to tell. And that's the part that they're starting from with a movie. Or they're like, yeah. I have this aspect of something that I need to do. And with video games, I don't feel like we have as many people that, that have that or feel that Way. I'd argue there is definitely literary worldly wisdom in the Dragon Quest games that oh, if yeah. you are if you're not a knuckle dragger like most people who immediately hate on Dragon Quest games for being too grindy. Um, yeah, I'm talking to a specific person listening to this. I'm just kidding. I'm not. Um, don't don't email me. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a there. There is a very wonderfully nuanced, gradiated, evolving uh, kind of worldly knowledge yeah. uh, evident in a literary way that is just slowly evolving over the course of the Dragon Quest narratives that I find super, super beautiful. So I wouldn't put it past Yuji Hori. To, maybe it'll be Dragon Quest Thirteen. Yeah, I think there's definitely a, a few out there. I but I feel like if we talk about a, a Ken Levine, I don't think Ken Levine wants to be doing no, this. Well, at AJ. No, you're, you're, you're either you're either very safely employed at a company that's not going away, aka Japanese, or yeah. you are someone who can hustle hard for money for the rest of your life, which would be um, a Ken Levine or actually a Kojima, even though he is Japanese. Yeah, an honorary American. So. I mean, th- those are all rare things. Like, I was trying to think about Nintendo, and it was like, well, what about Tessica? It's like, well, he doesn't actually, like, he just seems to supervise at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Which which is, you know, the fate of a lot of uh, creators in a corporate structure, no matter what, right? So it's, I, I mean, uh, the pool's just tiny. I think it kind of mm-hmm. has yeah. to be someone like a, like a Hori, right? Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think we're going to create new permanent salary men who direct games, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, I, I think that's... Done. If I'm still directing new video games at age 80, it is almost certainly because I ha- don't have another choice. Like I'm yeah. 40 yeah. something yeah. and I'm I'm tired of hustling all the time. I have yeah. to still. This is something I genuinely have no idea about. What is the culture around retirement in Japan? I don't the people do it. Yeah, they do it sometimes. Uh, a lot of people will have a retired uh, dad or retired uncle. Uh, retirement is a bit of a privileged thing. It's a bit of a luxury. Uh, yeah. Some people, you know, they're just, they have a lot of just vibrant, uh, vivacious, ultra healthy old dudes walking around over there smoking five packs of cigarettes a day who aren't retired and don't mind, right? Like it's, it's, it's a curious, curious nation, but uh, they, they treasure, first of all, old people are allowed to be cool in Japan. 
which is unlike America, it's getting better about it. Like the the reverence the youth have for Martin Scorsese is genuinely heartwarming. The kids love Martin Scorsese, and he's an old man. They love him now. It's weird, and I love it. I think that's great. Uh, so old people are allowed to be cool in Japan. So I think old creatives kind of have it have it a little easy. You got a uh, you got rent control in a serious way in Japan. Oh, yeah. You got it's cost of living's mm, beautiful. You got you got people over there paying two hundred dollars a month for the apartment they've had for the last sixty years. Ooh. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing, and it's also in hundred walk score neighborhoods and yeah, yeah, every, like next to the train station. They don't even have walk score there because it would be completely irrelevant. Yeah, it's like <laughs> what, yeah. what? What? There's a place you can't do Vegeta it. Vegeta shattering his scouter. But on the other hand, you do get. Like there is a guy who I mentioned in the in one of my Japan trips who has worked on a bunch of cool stuff, can't get anything together now, and doesn't know what to do about it. He can't retire. He is living in one of those cheap apartments. He can scrape yeah. by, but he's like 55 years old. Nobody wants to hire a 55-year-old in Japan. He's yeah. not in a company. Kickstarting something by himself is really difficult because he doesn't have money to give people. So you're, it's just like, what do you do? And I look at that guy and I think that, well, maybe that's my future. I've never had a hit. I've worked on a bunch of things. I should work on getting a yeah, hit. What you should aim for is the Yoshiro Kimura situation where he just got some of his friends that he's known and yeah. worked with and then stopped working with and then worked with again and then gotten mad at each other and started separate companies. And then uh, those companies break apart and then join other companies and then they all quit. And then yeah. uh, now it's just they all work together in an office in Shinjuku in Okubo. But what would have to happen for that is for people to decide in 10 years that some of the things I did were seminal works. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> and yeah, that, So yeah. that I could then come back to, because, uh, you know, the, those games that the, the Love Delic uh, folks worked on were enjoyed in their times, but not massively popular, and they have come under greater appreciation later. I mean, I think the I moon would, was I would, pretty popular. I would put them at like a hair below uh, popular. They were, they were cult. Yeah, they were yeah. like cult at best in their time. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, we're going to do a break uh, immediately after question number five, which will only take five seconds. So let's go on and get into it. Uh, I, I, I keep confusing. I don't have my reading glasses on. I'm sorry. I meant to press the uh, question number five. Question number five. Alex Jaffe, do you have a random.org app on your uh, phone or on your on your computer desk. I have it open on my browser at all times. At all times. Very good. Um, I need you to flip a coin for me. Heads or tails? I'm calling heads. It's tails. Okay. Well, I will still be making uh, video games and uh, stuff at age 80. I just... I, that uh, was the tail flip? That was, that was the <laughs> coin flip. We'll be back after a little bit of a break. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, God darn it. Sorry, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally an insert credit panelist. It feels like I've made it into a very exclusive club. I'm part of the universe. I don't know. I just always kind of felt like as the host, I was inquiring of the people who belonged there without being one of them. It's nice. It's nice to be on. Nice to be asked. I didn't think I could do it, but I don't know. It's going okay. Hey. Question number six. I really love the Street Fighter 2-6. <laughs> it's yeah. my favorite number that he said. They says. did their very best. Seven is also very good. The seven is all. We're going to be getting into that in a moment. Um, so earlier I had Alex Jaffe uh, do some random.org. Um, Alex Jaffe, can you generate for me a number between one and 164? Okay. We've got 156. 156. This is how you know I didn't plan this. Ah, roll me another one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to roll me another one. You're going to hate this. 107. Oh, very nice. Uh, that's a that's a prime, Carl. Uh, you know, I might you may have to roll another one given the nature of this thing. Okay. All right. Okay, this was good. <laughs> 107 is actually this is very good. All right. So, uh welcome back to Insert Credit. And it's time for a segment everybody loves. Uh, the Insert Credit Time Capsule segment. We all love this one, right? Like everybody knows this one. This is a segment where the host, in this case me, goes into the uh, the library folder of the uh, action button uh, local server 
and accesses our huge repository of video game magazines and uses uh, the uh, the insert credit uh, 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 random randomizer. That's, that's too boring of a word. I tried to make up a fake word. Uses the insert credit randomizer to uh, uh, narrow down a video game magazine a year, a month, and uh, finally live on the show a page. So I've selected a page from a video game magazine, and uh, you get one point if you uh, know the name of the game. It's 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 describing. <laughs> Okay. You get two points if you can name any other video game in the magazine. You get three points. No. You get two points. No. You get three points if you can name the magazine. Yeah. And you get you get six points. That's touchdown. If you can name the month and the year. Uh and oh, you, you get you get four points if you can just name the year. So I'm going to pick a random sentence from this page. I'm, I'm going to reach for one point. I think that's the best I can do in this. So uh, here's 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 the very first uh, sentence that my eyes landed on. I'm just going to read most of this page because there's very little text uh, as, you know, uh, this a clue to what year it might be. Uh, the forest is filled with many dangers. There are all kinds of enemies waiting to attack you. Collect the keys so you can free the prisoners and gain allies to help you fight the boss. Also, collect as much gold as you can for a vitality bonus when you beat the level. Okay. Alex Jeffy, you picked a really good number because yeah. uh, we, we got levels. To me, this reads like late 80s computer game is what I'm... Okay. That's okay. that's the direction that I'm thinking. I don't know if I'm leading anyone astray, but... uh. The way they're talking about it, I'm I'm guessing like 1989. 1989, pretty good, pretty good guess actually. I'm gonna go ahead and say this, and I'm gonna I hope this isn't giving away too much, but uh, that's probably what I would have guessed if I hadn't been the one who ended up you know picking this magazine. Uh, I probably would have guessed 1989, right. but I know that's wrong. So yeah, are we just gonna go years? You, you can guess whatever aspect First, of this. I kind I kind of like this format. Like, okay, like, okay. like let's kind of let's kind of round robin that right. Go so, for years. Yeah, let's do it. I'm getting Super Nintendo vibes. Okay, I gotta I don't keep know my poker the, face on over here. The video element is very important to this. Um, based on that and uh, on it being Tim, I'm gonna go 1994. Ooh, well, no, keep in mind it was randomly selected. I must say it the was, magazine like, itself. The, was, the magazine, not just the, the page. So I I randomly select ma- uh, year and then magazine and then month and then page. Okay. So it's uh it's quadruple random. And Jaffe's number was just the page, but you had previously done the randomizing. Yeah, the the, the the folder was open, and that's how yeah. I had the number of pages, which was I guess that was a bit of a spoiler. 164 pages in this okay. mag in this magazine. Yeah, I also think that the um collecting gold for a health bonus that's 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 the key to the puzzle. I can't f- I don't know which game that is, but that's and also the the fact that there's levels. And it's, so it's not like a RPG with with worlds or get into this part of the map. It was levels. So I love I love you this. Did say levels. Yeah, that's what I would say. I, I love that this is the page that got chosen. This is so good. Um, okay, so I can read you another blurb from the page. Would y'all like another blurb? This will narrow it down yeah. a little bit more. So there's yeah, three blurbs hear. total on the page. Um, the heading for this page. Uh, there's two headings. There's two sections. One has no no prose. Uh, just pictures. And the other heading, the one that I, I, I read the first blurb from, reads, The adventure begins in level one, which as a connoisseur <laughs> of old-timey video game uh, <laughs> magazine writing, uh, uh, I'm, I'm losing my mind at that being yeah. the, the, the sentence that my eyes fell on when I picked this first page for this, uh, this inaugural. Uh, Alex Jeff, you feel free to steal this segment, by the way. I think it's fun. Oh, this is very good. I just don't have access to this repository. Oh, you will. You will. Very soon. Yeah, um, so do uh, don't worry about that part. So we're going to read you another blurb from The Adventure Begins in Level 1. Are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> this next blurb is... Uh, Oh, my watch is my my watch. Oh my god, my watch, my Siri. I found this on the web. Banjo Kazooie: The Big Bear and Bird Adventure begins November first, twenty twenty. <laughs> YouTube.com. What? 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 I didn't what? say Banjo Kazooie, but that is the game here. No, just kidding. It's not. <laughs> um, uh, that was very strange. Um, this next blurb: A huge battle awaits you in the castle. Level one was just a taste of things to come. Now that you've made it to the castle, get ready for even more action. You'll have to deal with pillars of fire, rivers of lava, skeletons, killer bears, and other wild creatures. 
You will find many power-ups along the way, and there are also many prisoners who will help you in your noble quest. Huh. Mm. Noble quest. Okay. Medieval. Noble noble quest. Killer bears. Yeah, noble quest. You got it from there, yeah. All of these things are in East games, but that doesn't help. They don't have levels. Yeah, that's true. But, but like... The, the pillars of fire and freeing the prisoners and stuff. That, the, uh, East books too is very is very um, now, oriented. Now there is right. one factor we haven't considered, yeah. and it's that the person who is describing this game is doing a bad job of describing the game. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, uh, so I, some I, of I this information that. may be incorrect. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I'm considering that. As uh, as was quite popular in that era, it was quite popular in that era to not really play the game very more, very much more than a couple of minutes and get a couple right. of screenshots from it. So uh, if you'd like, you can try to mention uh, other games that might be uh, I've got a list of the games that are in this issue of this magazine that informs my guess. I'm going to go ahead and shoot my guess off from the hip. If this is extremely wrong, so be it. I am also going to say 1994. Okay. Even though I did just say that was wrong. So, oh, yeah. okay. Fair yeah, enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said it was wrong. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I. I guess I meant to say that. I might have only said that it was random. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, yeah. You it's didn't 94. say it was no. Wrong. You didn't say it was wrong. You said it was randomized. Sorry. 90, 94, 94 is wrong. All right. Then I am going to think about this a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Well, Brandon, give me another guess. What do you got? For a year. Guess a year. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go uh, two up. I'm going to ninety one now. Okay. Going to ninety one. Okay, I, I will not be saying whether the guesses are correct uh, after the first round, as is the custom on a okay. credit time capsule. Frank, mm. do you have guess number two for the for year? year? Uh, 93. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go straight in a row, 91. That's what I said. Yeah, that was I thought you said, said 90, I thought you said 92. Well, well I Price didn't. is writing this. this is well, good. then I'll say 92. But there's, there's no winner. <laughs> uh, Alex Jaffe, you are correct. It is 1992. Yes! Uh, yes! That's the only crowd sound I have, unfortunately. Uh, So it is 1992. I'm going to read one more blurb from this this magazine page. It's the only other text on the page. Boss one. If you have the paladin, you will be able to defeat this boss easily. You will get a more powerful sword for beating him. Anybody have a guess as to what game or platform or developer? I think this is uh, like a DOS game. Very good, very good. Uh, but that's, uh, that's also know. what Brandon thinks. Um, yeah, that's yeah. what I think. Man, it, it, it's I'm also like if you have the paladin, it could either be if you have the paladin. Yeah, pretty wild. Man, huh? like could it, it, it? It can be a, a console conversion of a DOS game, but it's a DOS game. Yeah. We do know the remember. We do know the year 1992. Remember? Nin- yeah, yeah. Some of the things I'm thinking about are like a gain ground port. There wasn't one in 92, I don't think, but, um, or, or like a, a Xanadu to like a fact Xanadu thing, but there wasn't one in 92, yeah. uh, that I can think of. So, but it's something where you gain, where you get character. If you have the paladin is like, you have the paladin. Yeah. It's yeah. very, very mysterious, isn't it? It is mysterious. I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one doing this, but I'm trying to go for the publication angle, which, okay. Oh, sure. Sure. Things. Yeah. Do um, it. I know you're as uh, maybe even more of a connoisseur of video game publication pros than I am, Frank Cifaldi. I will say this is a little atypical for this particular publication. I, I, this doesn't feel exactly like I'm used to with this publication. I don't know if an intern wrote it or what. That's interesting. The, the heading at the top of the page that has a bunch of screenshots says, rescue the different prisoners for more firepower is the next uh, text. On this so game. This, this doesn't feel like EGM pros to me, but it feels like EGM page count to me from this. Era. Yeah, 164. I'm going to read a couple scattered sentences from the previous page. Uh, so uh, you can select which floor you begin at, just like in the coin op. Oh. So that's mm. right. You can continue yeah. three times and it will not even cost you a quarter. You must survive all 50 floors and win the final battle blank uh, to destroy it and the evil power it possesses. I, I left out the name of a proper noun. So. Yeah. Uh, man, th- I still want this to be 1989 based on this <laughs> description. I, I will I say that not, this but... video game is a game that reminds me that uh, one of the games we mentioned earlier in the show feels to me like a spiritual modern version of this game. Well, I, I am driving myself crazy because I can't think of the <laughs> name of the game. Yeah, maybe I can. This is this is like the best possible Tim, video Tim, game. For is this it segment. Magic Sword? Yes. Wow. Okay. Oh, nice. <sighs> I, yeah, <that's> I, a- <laughs> I'm. Hey, you got it. 
<laughs> I can't prove this, but uh, yeah. this was actually my first guess w- based on the first paragraph. I believe it. But I just couldn't think of the name of it. I believe it. it. Can you make a definitive statement of what the magazine is? Um, well, so first of all, I think I'm right about Super Nintendo. Oh, yeah. Super Nintendo, just like in the coin op, right? So Yeah. So I got two. I am going to go Electronic Gaming Monthly on this. Okay. And uh, uh, you don't need to mention the month, but the month is April 1992, Electronic Gaming Monthly. So for uh, for bonus, uh, that's that's the page. For the bonus points, uh, who wants to try to name a, a game that is advertised in, in this in this magazine, in this issue? Give me a name of a game. I've just finished, uh, just about scrolled through the whole thing. And I can tell you, something advertised in here. Oh, man. Uh, I, it's hard for me to remember what years anything was. Yeah, that's, that's my problem. There's a preview for the game Lennis for Super Nintendo, uh, which was released as Paladin's Quest, one of my favorite games. Dragon Warrior Three is advertised in this mm. issue, 1992. Try your hand at the RPG that shook Japan. April 92, <laughs> right? April 92. Yeah. Final fight. Final fight. The original final fight. I think the, the I, I think it, with the kids carrying the the arcade cabinet and it's like you don't have to do this you can have the arcade at home that's the one I oh man I, I i didn't see that one in here isn't it final fight 2 by now i think it would be well final fight came out with the super nintendo at the end of 91 in the u.s yeah, and then the next game was final fight 3 all uh, right i'm gonna say kirby's dreamland kirby's dreamland i didn't see that one what, what no. the game of the month is contra 3 the alien wars uh, that's that's a that's a noob guess because uh nintendo didn't do first party ads yeah, mm. yeah, they did not. Yeah, I am Would a there noob. be a Sonic 2 ad yet? It's a few months early. No, absolutely no, not. No, no. Yeah, they did it later. Okay. A few months. It came out in November, dude. <laughs> what was it? Yeah, that's five months. I believe that's all the time we have for this segment, but uh, I, I, think it, I think it was I, pretty Frank's fun. our winner. Congratulations, Frank, on being the guy who knows the most about video game magazines here. Ah. Who could have guessed? Well, if you ever do this again, I think I think we can have a good time with this. It would have been uh, possible to guess the game. I think we both would have stumbled in the same place because like that's not yeah. EGM language. I, I agree with you. I, I really think Magic Sword is just like the perfect video game for this to be because it is like the least iconic Capcom game, I yeah. think, of all the like Super Nintendo era Capcom games. And I feel like Dragon's Dogma is like the modern Magic Sword. Yeah, um, I, I almost rules. wanted to earlier on guess Knights of the Round, and then you would have probably said that's close, and then I would have yeah. gotten more confused because yeah. I would have forgotten yeah. Magic Sword existed. I guess if we're workshopping this as a future segment, uh, maybe just uh, being free and loose with guesses um, would be uh, mm-hmm. would be uh, you know pretty good. Okay, so I know Frank's got to go soon, so I guess yeah. we're just going to, in, in lieu of a lightning round, I'm just going to tell you all a story. It's a little story. It's a short story. Okay. Uh, do you, okay. What? Do I what? What are you going to say? I was going to say, do you want to play the question number seven sound effect that you teased earlier? Oh, yeah. Well, you want to hear the word seven. You just want to hear it, don't you? Yeah, I just want to hear the seven. Question number seven. Oh, that's good. (laughs) Seven. That's good. I really hope to get all the way to ten because there's only eight and there's nine and the nine is really violent. Nine. Nine. Eight. Hey, it's just like dying grass. Tim, why was six afraid of seven? Seven's two syllables. That's my joke. That's oh, a yeah. good one. I, I, right. I was queuing you up to play all three of those in a row. Yeah, yeah uh, because... Seven, eight, nine... Oh, you. no! <laughs> it did? Okay, so I'm just going to tell you this. Uh, it's a little story. I've written some notes to make sure I tell it correctly. Um, this is something that is uh, serious to me, and it's um, much like my, one of my favorite films, Fargo. This is a true story. Um, um, okay, so it's just, you know, I, I, it's only going to take, it's, I think it'll take about three minutes or so to tell the story. Just, okay, this is, you know, this is, this is a big deal for me. Okay. Um, so I was, I actually, I went to the doctor this morning um, and uh, just about a, a, a sort of a, a health problem that had been, it's been stressing me out for like a month, right? So I first, uh, I first encountered, and I, I encountered this, this health problem. I was in the airport, my feet and my calves started uh, tingling with like a sort of pins and needles feeling like like my legs had fallen asleep just out of nowhere right so by the time i got on the airplane my knees had gone all numb and i was like that's not good right just they were just completely numb before i even sat down i hadn't even been sitting down for a minute so like a week later like i was just still experiencing these intermittent uh like streaking shooting tingling sort of painish feelings just kind of crackling my legs crackling every couple seconds like my legs were just like they went from nothing to like 20 minutes on a toilet dead numb and then eight seconds later, the feeling just kind of like would come right back, right? Just like popping in and out. 
of, of feeling. So two weeks later, I became quite acutely aware of a stabbing pain in my lower back, sort of near my spine, sort of off to the left side. So I did a little bit of Googling. And I think uh, I, 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 I said, aha, uh-huh. I, I think I know what's wrong. And of course, I did the responsible thing and I made a doctor's appointment. And I went to the doctor's office this morning. And the doctor asked me, you know, so what brings you in, you know? You know, the, the kind of, he's the kind of doctor, just imagine the kind of doctor who, if, he, if you had to take your pants off, he would call them trousers, right? That's the kind of doctor this guy was. And I said, I just told him well, like a month ago, I, had a, I noticed a strong tingling sensation in my feet and calves. My knees went numb. A week later, I had all these shooting, tingling, pain-like feelings just crackling up and down my legs every couple of seconds. Um, I, I told the doctor that on my walk to the doctor's office, I felt this unmistakable sensation of cold water splashing on the backs of my calves. And I said to the doctor, it made me wonder, is that even is that even what cold water splashing on my legs feels like? Or is that just the way that the brain communicates some nerve overwhelming sensation? Like, it was like, what is cold water splashing on my legs? I don't know. So the doctor was like, have you had any pain in your groin or lower back? And I said, oh yeah, I got a pain on the right side of my groin and a pretty sharp pain in my back. And the doctor said, Did you experience the pain in your back at the same time as or after you started feeling the tingling sensations in your legs? And I said, oh, it happened after. The doctor was like, hmm. And he just starts typing to his laptop. You know, with he had a Diet Coke in his hand and he's just typing with one hand in the laptop. So he's just typing and typing and typing. And uh, it's just dead silent. He's typing, sipping his Diet Coke. And I, I, I just say out loud. And I feel real bad, that, like before I even say this, I say, so I was uh, doing some Googling and then he just looks at me with his eyebrows all the way up and he goes, uh-huh. And I was like, well, and I kind of just thought, you know, it sounds like, and he's like, oh yeah. And I was like, well, it, it seems like, you know, maybe I have. And he goes like, I mean, I see this look on his face, like he's all like, oh, here it comes. And I said, I think I, I might have a herniated lumbar disc, right? Like it's common problem. And the doctor just instantly yells, no. And he's like, everybody comes in here thinking they have a herniated lumbar disc. And I'm like, doctor, I mean, I have this tingling sensation in my legs. And he goes, and? And I said, and my knees, they're so numb. They feel sometimes like they don't even exist. And the doctor's like, and? And I go, my legs are all crackly and tingly and electric. And every 10 minutes or so, it feels like eight whole seconds. Like it feels for like eight whole seconds. Like I just sat on the toilet for half an hour. And the doctor goes, and? And I said, I've got this pain in my lower back. And the doctor says, and? And I was like, well, I first noticed it in the airport. Maybe my suitcase was too heavy and I yanked it out of the Uber in such a hurry. And the doctor was now standing up and he says, and? And I said, doctor, the Uber was so big. I requested just a regular one and they sent like a road yacht. And the guy offered to help me with his suitcase and he was so shredded. And I was jealous. (laughs) To be honest, the guy was, he was ripped. So I was like, no, it's all right, bro. And I gripped and ripped those suitcases. And I don't even know what was in Mimsy's suitcase. I'm genuinely surprised the airline even let her check it in. I think I twisted my back and the doctor goes, no. And he's like, don't you see it, man? And I was like, what? And he was like, look at yourself. And there was this big full length mirror directly in front of me. So I looked at myself and the doctor said, look at your hair. And I was like, okay, yeah, so. And the doctor pressed his fingers into his forehead and he just kind of goes all quiet for a second, just sheer frustration. And he says, dude, the receptionist told me when you came in here, you deposited a huge gold tobacco pipe the size of a baseball bat in the umbrella stand. And I was like, that old thing? And then the doctor was like, buddy, you listed your emergency contact as Ebisumaru. And I was like, so? I love that guy. And the doctor says, clearly you have Gyanbare Goemon syndrome. <laughs> there you go. That's my joke. It's pretty good. Do I have a sound? Well, for that? <laughs> well, that's all our time today. That's pretty good. All right. So everybody's homework for one month from uh, now is uh, prepare your own. I went to the doctor joke in a similar fashion. <laughs> Mixing, uh, I actually do have a herniated lumbar disc. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not Guillain-Barre uh, syndrome. I just compose your own. I went to the doctor anecdote. It need not be as lengthy as mine. It, it could be fun. And, you know, keep us guessing until the end. Who guessed? Raise your hand if you guessed. If you didn't, it's fine. I see everyone's raising their hand. Well, Brandon, Brandon. <laughs> I'm five minutes past my heart stop. I gotta go. Oh, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> wait. Oh, oh, he didn't say he was Frank Cifaldi. We'll, we'll get, get it from, from another episode.
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that is pretty easy to get that. I one. did. Uh, I did think it was going on, but it 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 took. I, I needed the gold, the gold tobacco pipe. Tobacco yeah. pipe. Oh, Guillaume Barre. That's my favorite joke because uh, you know how I ended up with that. I saw the words uh, Guillaume Barre, and I just said, "Oh, Guillaume Barre, Goyman." Yeah, that's it. That's, that's sometimes it. all it takes to write a thing. It's Brandon in the shower. The video games will never stop being a part of your life. I just asked for a regular Uber, and they sent this big one. (laughs) For some reason, that worked its way in there. Well, that's the end, I guess. Yeah. I guess it is. We did it. Um, I've got some recommendations. Oh, yeah. What you got? I recommend if you're looking for a comic book to read, reach out to me on Blue Sky. Blue Sky? I'm Alex Jaffe, uh, bisky.social. Uh, dot app uh the the usual suffix uh tell me what kind of comics you're into and uh i'll give you a personalized comic book recommendation how about that wow. one just for you that that's my offer and it lasts from this week until next week nice i'm trying to find uh this blue sky website yeah on b sky dot app that's the one i'm on there i i guess i just didn't know it was b sky dot app was the was the mm-hmm. URL? I didn't know. Yeah, bisk bisky. I don't look at that stuff no more, Carl. I got another podcast called Fifty Two Pickup. If you want to listen to that, go ahead and do that. Five Two B. Do that with Gita Jackson. It's a good old time. Once I was trying to figure out what comic books I should read, and someone mentioned that one, and I I started reading the first issue of it, but I didn't finish it. Oh, there you uh, go. I mean, not for like any sinister reason. I just I, yeah. I ended up getting like I feel like you can't get the feel for something in like three right. pages, obviously. But uh, it was it was you know reading on an iPad back in the year 2012 or so. What, what year would it have been? It would have been like 2013, 2014. For you, Tim Rogers, I would recommend Matt Wagner's Sandman Mystery. Mystery theater. I think Sandman you would get something mystery. interesting out of that. Is that available on any uh, any delicious apps I might have? Oh, it's on to? DC Universe Infinite. Oh, that's what I figured. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it, Charles. I'll take a look at it. Very good. What do you have any recommendations, Brandon? Uh, you know, not today. Um, oh, that's good. <laughs> I it's don't. Good to not, it's good to not have recommendations sometimes. Yeah. Although I do have a funny, uh, weird thing. I don't know if it's even funny or even weird. <laughs> I was looking at the the Blu-ray of another uh, Indonesian horror film from the 80s. It, the back of it was so odd because I guess there was a popular remake, which I've never heard of. But the back spends half, the, the, the text on the back spends half of the time talking about this popular remake and how this is the original of that. But I, who have never heard of the popular remake, am confused. Like, is the remake on this disc? And half of the extras are the director of the remake talking about this movie and two short films that the director of the remake did. And again, I've never heard of this remake. Uh, very odd. Uh, Satan's Slave is the name of the, of the movie. I'd never experienced that before where so much of the text of an unrelated movie, so much of the back text was about an unrelated movie. Or at least it's related, but it's not in, included. It was really weird. Yeah, it's a little dark and strange when that sort of thing occurs. Yeah, didn't really, didn't really like it. Oh, I did just watch um, Tetsuo the Iron Man finally for the first time. Oh, really? And uh, I would say that um, that's something somebody could watch if they've never watched it for the first time. Yeah, that's uh, that's an experience. Yeah, it's it's certainly an exercise in uh, lower lower budget but higher reward filmmaking where uh, I don't. I don't really know that you could make that movie today because that movie's already been made, basically. Like, I don't think that you can... Perhaps it's my lack of imagination, but I don't know that a physical effects-laden and reliant movie would have the same impact today as it would then. I don't know what the equivalent of doing that now is, uh, is, is the other part of that. So I remember watching that movie on VHS uh, from my, my, my college uh, video store. Because mm-hmm. uh, I I just kind of thought it was related to Akira. Uh sure. I was like, is this related to Akira somehow? And it's like clearly it's not. No. But uh, it just kind of rules that uh, I might accidentally think. Yeah. And it's directed by Shinya. Uh, what's his name? Uh, mm-hmm. Shinya, Shinya, Shinya what's his name? It's exactly right. Uh, Shinya Tsukamoto. Tsukamoto Shinya. Who, interestingly, I met that guy exactly once in my life. So oh. he's one of the only people I've ever met who was in a Martin Scorsese movie. So. 
nice. he's in he's in Silence, which if you haven't seen, is a pretty pretty decent film. He's not 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 a bad actor. He's acted in more things than he's directed. Yeah, he's a he's a real he's a true he's a true dramatist. Uh, yeah, experimental theater. I really like Silence that movie. Uh, that's not my recommendation for the week though. Um, I just I remember uh, I remember nobody liked it when it came out. Like none of my buddies, like nobody wanted to. I, I actually went and saw it twice. So that's how sick I am. So I, I went and saw it twice. A movie about Catholics getting beat up by samurais. I'm all for it. You know, like what the heck, right? <laughs> Catholics just getting strung up, beat up, kicked in the nuts just by samurais. Like that's cool. It's a niche, you know. It's a real niche. It's not. You don't really get that in a lot of movies. I've, uh, I have to admit something. This is this is a. Uh... This says something probably not positive about myself. Well, go for it, Carl. But every time I'm I'm watching something, I'm watching a trailer for something, and then Adam Driver's face appears, oh. then I think, you know, maybe I don't want to watch this. Mm, you got to get over that. And I have never seen a movie with Adam Driver in it. Oh man, well, uh, I mean, I don't know if Silence would be the uh, the best one. He's he's not in it as much as uh, the other guy Garfield, who I, I also think is a good actor. Andrew Garfield's fantastic. I, I think Adam Driver's fantastic. I know everybody loves him, but I and I it's it's I can't explain it. It's just like I see that guy's face and my interest plummets to zero. Martin Scorsese called him the best actor he's ever worked with, which is weird. It's wild to hear that. It's just one of those things that, uh, like, there's no judgments here from me. Martin Scorsese also loves working with Leonardo DiCaprio, so... Uh, well, he did, he, he never said Leonardo DiCaprio is the best actor I've ever worked with. He never said that out loud. So. Yeah, but I, I, the fact that he keeps casting him says a lot. Um. Well, I think that's just kind of a case of working relationship. Like he had, yeah. he used uh, Robert De Niro. He's in. He's the Robert De Niro role now. He's the Robert De Niro casting, and then Robert De Niro. They had to age his character up forty years for the Killers of the Flower Moon, which really is a good movie, by the way. If anybody listening to this hasn't watched it yet, I've added it to my list. It's very good. I had a very good. T- Weirdly, I did not go to the bathroom during that movie. It was uh, one of the few times in my life I've gone to the movie theater and did not have to go to the bathroom at the end of the movie. But I did, you know, I went and, you know, saw what I could do, you know, but it was like three hours and 26 minutes. That's like winning a lottery jackpot, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to make another recommendation. Uh, You just reminded me. Uh, I want to recommend the movie Poor Things. I just saw that in an empty movie theater. I was the only person there. In uh, Florida? In South Florida, a noon screening. Walked in, uh, one for poor things. I had no idea what to expect. I knew absolutely nothing about this movie going in, and I just had a really good old time. And it, it's one of those movies where you walk in, and then it happens, and it's over. So when you went to see Poor Things, uh, and, and there was nobody else in the theater, you missed out on the fun experience I had, which was someone asking like 30 minutes in, is this whole thing in black and white? <laughs> And I was like, ah, yeah, just out loud, just like full volume. Is this whole thing? And I was like, the whole thing or the poor thing? I have is what a I wanted to ask. precious family friend, Howie. Uh, anytime we go to see a movie with Howie, like anytime anything strange happens, he will ask out loud in full volume. Is this a dream? Is this <laughs> oh, a dream? That's, that's so good. <laughs> That is some. That is some mom or aunt behavior baked into that boy. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I recently went to see the movie. I've mentioned this. I uh, went to see the movie Godzilla Minus One. Uh, yeah, went to see it in the theater. Have you seen that, Brandon? No, I just I have it. That's another thing. I I, I always feel like I should like Godzilla, and I've never managed to achieve uh, it. Well, have you seen Shin Godzilla? I can't remember. That's Hide- it, You'd remember this one. It's Hideaki Anno's extremely mundane procedural uh, government story about Godzilla. I may have avoided that because of my distaste for Hideaki Anno. Oh, well, I mean, that would be the one to watch, in my opinion. I watched Godzilla. This is this is a fun bonus here. I watched that Godzilla Minus One, and I am only bringing it up now because I saw... Uh, I'm on a lot of uh, FYC lists The for your consideration. Every time I open social media, I am seeing for your consideration as a writer. Like, they've got me, right? I'm, I am a member of the WGA. They're like, vote for this, for screenplay, right? And uh, for some reason, every once in a while, there's some normies in the replies to these FYC uh, WGA posts on Instagram. So today, there was for your consideration as best 
Adapted Screenplay Academy Award. Please consider voting for Killers of the Flower Moon by Martin Scorsese, right? And uh, uh, I, I click on the replies and there's a reply that's just some guy with four followers that's best movie of 2023, right? And then the reply to that was, tell me you haven't seen Godzilla Minus One without saying you haven't seen <laughs> Godzilla Minus One. And I was like, it was just another of those moments where I'm like, oh, I am surrounded by 12 to 16 year olds on the internet. And yeah. that's why I don't post, right? And it's like, that movie was fine. Godzilla, I had a good time watching it. It commits a few cardinal sins uh, in terms of structure. Any any card-carrying member of the Mystery Writers Guild, um, which may or may not exist, I leave that up to you, listener, to figure out. Yeah, uh, any card-carrying itself. member of the Mystery Writers Guild would not forgive a bunch of the stuff it does late in the movie. You'll know what I mean when you watch it, if you watch it, uh, dear reader. Uh, but I, I still had a very good time watching that movie. But what they did in Godzilla Minus One is they made a morose, sort of serious, sort of Ghibli movie that takes place immediately post World War II. And it's about mm-hmm. Godzilla attacking, uh, what is it? So he's attacked, what if Godzilla attacked seven years earlier? Which is a scenario never quite imagined in Godzilla movies. And interestingly, my thoughts while watching it was that, oh, this is a Godzilla. You know, remember Final Fantasy XV, a Final Fantasy for fans and first timers? That's what I was thinking of this Godzilla movie. I was like, it's for diehard Godzilla people and it's for people who've never chilled with Godzilla because they made an old fashioned Godzilla movie, but it's good. Quote unquote mm-hmm. good. It's it's solid. It's uh it's it's by the it all the numbers are painted correctly. So maybe you would like it, Brandon, but maybe you'd be a little conflicted about liking it for <laughs> a couple weird reasons. Yeah. But uh I think it's still kind of worth watching because you don't get to see a lot of really, really glossy high budget blockbusters intended for a global audience which are destined to make hundreds of millions of dollars in america from japan Certainly you don't not. really see uh i mean i guess any of those you you there's never actually no. been one so it's it's curious and it's also curious that it so directly is about the rise of nationalism mm-hmm. uh, and why that's bad is godzilla a metaphor for nationalism what is he a metaphor for? They the 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 director writer very smartly uses Godzilla as a metaphor for something other than Godzilla, right? Like Godzilla in most Godzilla movies, Godzilla's Godzilla. So I mean, it's 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 always been a bit of like nuclear power or yeah, some, re- something something. But yeah. initially, yeah, that's that's a hundred percent what he was. Yeah, it was uh, kids these days would probably describe it as a stealth protest film i think it was somewhat pretty openly a protest film when it when it came out which reminds me that they're playing it in 35 millimeter at film forum in new york city uh next month alex jaffe if you've never seen the original godzilla oh yeah it's not the greatest movie in the world have you seen the original godzilla brandon yeah yeah it's it's that's one of those like 100 international movies you must watch sort of movies right so it's like it's one that a lot of people have seen whether they really want to or not i like the original godzilla so did we end the show yet or what? No, no, yeah. we didn't. This is this is bonus, but uh, we can end the show. I want to before we. Uh, okay, so let's. Let, I'll do it. I'll do an ending here. Hold on. You want to ask Frank if he has anything to recommend? Frank, do you have anything to recommend? Uh, Esper put his no in here from a previous episode. No, nope. Frank's dead. He doesn't have anything to recommend. Um, so I have I have a couple of things to recommend. Uh, which this is this is a uh, I've, I've received sort of a critical mass of people asking me to advertise their products specifically uh, on uh, this show. So. I'm going to, instead of recommending any of those, recommend a few things, honestly, that I think are cool. So uh, the things I think are cool, there's a game available now on Steam and Itch, and the game is called Freak Hunter, which uh, it's a game made by a a prominent member. I would say prominent member. Is it a prominent member? I don't know how we determine uh, how prominent a person becomes a prominent member. A prominent member of the Action Button Discord, uh, Goop Lord. Goop Lord made this game Freak Hunter. And uh, I was intrigued by Freak Hunter right off the bat because it is an on rails. It's a rail shooter dungeon crawler, right? Which uh, sounds like a thing, right? That already sounds like a thing, doesn't it? It Mm -hmm. You kind of want to try that out. But what if I told you that for the next 20 hours, it is a, you know, in other words, when this episode comes out, it's already too late. It is available for the quite frankly, ridiculously low price, introductory low price of $3.39 on Steam. Now that's going to go back up to $3.99 by the time this episode airs, 
but you know, I can't, I can't help that. I'm not in control. It's like asking me to control the weather. So uh, I, I'm going to let the, the game's Steam description speak for itself for a second. The Freak Hunter is a dungeon crawler rail shooter action hybrid for sickos developed on vibes and created as an exercise in actually finishing a video game. It's inspired by early FPS games like Silent Debuggers on PC Engine and nice. Shadow Over Innsmouth on Virtual Boy. It'll probably take a little under two hours to reach the end. The, the, my, my punchline was going to be that this is a game that came out on January 26, 2024. And if Frank wants to play it and be the one to recommend it as a game of the year 2024, there it is. Um, I played Free Hunter and I've also talked about it on some of my streams and received a Discord DM from Gooplord asking me to speak at more detail uh, if I want to to relay my feedback. Uh, and uh, I could have done that in a DM, but instead I'm going to be a little weird and do it here on this podcast. Um, the Steam description says it is an exercise in actually finishing a video game, and Goop Lord has spoken uh, publicly in the Discord about making Freak Hunter and uh, wanting just the encouragement to make a full, giant, longer, more involved video game that's basically Freak Hunter. So all I'll say here, and I'll let, I'll let the viewer play for themselves, I mean, come on, it's four bucks, right? That's cheaper than Nobi Nobi Boy when it came out. The, the concept intrigued me right off the bat. Rail shooter, dungeon crawler. And I, most of what I've said on my live streams has, has focused on the name of the game, uh, Freak Hunter, which you've got to admit, I've been working as a creative in some capacity or another for, God, more than 20 years. And uh, I, I've considered myself pretty good at uh, as a namer of things, but uh, never came up with one like that. And that's usually what I've been saying. Though here's what I'll say. And I'm going to say this publicly. I'm going to declare this. If you are looking for the encouragement to make a full, longer, bigger, weirder, more expensive video game, Free Hunter 2, Free Hunter colon something, Super, super Free, free Hunter, Hunter. Uh, Ultra Free Hunter, no, Super Free Hunter, no, no, we can't do that, no, or just Free Hunter, Free Hunter, and you can't make it two words, it's got to be one word, if it's one word, that's the name of a video game. If you're looking for the encouragement, uh, I would say consider the concept uh, impeccably proven. And uh, please keep making these things, is what I would say. My only contribution to this is uh, is be careful to search for one word. F Free Hunter is one Freak word, Hunter's because one word. if you look up with two words, a totally different game comes up first on Steam. Yeah, well, don't do that. Look up the good one. Just the one FYI. That's, the one that's $3. Uh, we've got another, another recommendation that I've got is another prominent member. Again, I don't know what the measure is for uh, uh, prominent members of the Action Button Discord community. But we have, uh, 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 it goes by the, the YouTube username, lowercase j, J-A-I. That's how uh, Australian people pronounce uh, J-A-I is pronounced J, not Jai. Or maybe it is Jai. You can pronounce it in your head however you want. Lowercase j on YouTube has made lots and lots of good YouTube video essays, which is to say uh, they've made a couple of them and they're all good. And if you make a couple things that are all good, that's a lot, in my opinion. Now, they, they made an essay about the 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 the, the film, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Welcome Back, Mr. McDonald by Koki Mitani. You know Koki Mitani, who nope. also was a writer, director, he's a playwright, writer, director, also responsible for, for Furuhata Ninzaburo, which I mentioned on oh, one yeah. of these. Uh, uh, there's a video of that. Um, though There's also a, a much newer video that I think is spectacularly good, which is about, uh, it is about YouTube poops or YTPs, which it is really, really fun to see some semi-academic uh, 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 intellectual analysis of, of YTP's place in art history. Um, and it primarily focuses on the, the Fesh Pence series. I don't know if you all are familiar with this one. Um, mm -hmm. it is, it is the Mona Lisa of YouTube poops, in my opinion. Um, the Fesh Pence one and two are fantastic. And after a hiatus of 10 years, Fesh Print Pence three was released a few weeks back, prompting, uh, a Jay to make this video, which, uh, I found very, very well written and uh, very well edited and just well well performed. And I think that video is great. And number three of a thing nobody asked me to recommend or advertise is there's a Kickstarter live now for a product called Glider, G-L-Y-D-R, which is a foot controller for video games that is uh, invented sort of based on uh, just the idea of those, those like unicycle scooter electric things 
where it's just forward backward motion. Yeah, the Gizmo Deck device. There's a lot, of, yeah, yeah, Gizmo Duck style thing. But it is a foot pedal that is made of heavy duty materials that you can put on the floor in front of your desk, and uh, you know, it kind of reminds you of the thing where uh, past a certain point uh, and up to a certain point, accessibility is just usability, right? Mm-hmm. So it's perfectly blurring the line between accessibility and usability to a point where it's just it just makes stuff more usable. If you use it to supplement your hands and fingers, ideally with a, a controller with paddles. I saw one GIF of it on Twitter a few months ago and immediately, immediately thought, I need to get one of these for playing my video games at my desk so that I can have more buttons on my feet. Because my feet, I just kind of think, where are my feet right now? And I'm like, oh, they're right here. I could be doing something with these, uh, and it would even make the game more fun. So uh, it's live on Kickstarter right now, and it got funded in a few minutes, which is interesting. I backed it, and uh, you know, backing it means you'll get one. I think it just looks like a phenomenally good product, and uh, I believe in it, uh, in all the research I've put into it. Uh, I don't back stuff on Kickstarter unless uh, unless I'm really jonesing for it. So I think that's, you know, you know me, I'm an Xbox uh, One Elite controller, paddles aficionado, so uh, I'm all about having 16 things I can do with my feet uh, in addition to stuff with a controller. I'm going to put some Baldur's Gate hotkeys on there, you know, play my Armored Core 6 with that thing. Mm-hmm. So it looks pretty good. Anyway, that's my three recommendations. What do you think? I saved them up. I saved up a bunch of them. Sounds grand. I think Frank would have liked all of those recommendations. <laughs> I miss Frank. Yeah. Well, he's dead. Shotgun blast. Mario sound. Hey, hold on. Let me get it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a second. Bingo. He's, he's dead. Hold on. Hang on a second. I moved. I had to move all my stuff around because. Uh... Oh, bingo. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, that's all I got <laughs> for issue 324. Yeah. Of Insert Credit Audio Magazine. Do you like my. Uh, temporary title there it's pretty good isn't it i like it answered credit audio magazine because you know you call it a show you call it a podcast what if it's an audio magazine we got sure. articles it makes sense right yeah mm-hmm. audio magazine we we've got uh an activity page on the back if i contribute anything at all to the future of this program let it be that i made you think the phrase audio magazine <laughs> and maybe it informs something i don't know i, I came up with that off the top of my head at the beginning of the show and it was the best part and uh that's as good as it got for me i'm alex jaffe i'm frank Safaldi. i'm tim rogers i'm brandon sheffield and a huge battle awaits you in the castle Nice. Level one was, and level, uh, I'm Tim Rogers, and level one was just a taste of things to come. (laughs) Oh, that's so good. I think a huge battle awaits you in the castle is better. Yeah.